So we all know that everything we do has a consequence. Everything has a cause and effect relation, whether that be positive or negative. So just by raise of hands, how many of us have ate meat before? Maybe it be a hot dog, hamburger, some chicken, right? So everyone, right? So modern society doesn't really think about the effects of eating meat how it has effects on the environment. So today, my proposition is that a vegetarian lifestyle demonstrates more beneficial effects on the environment than a meat-centered one. So I'm going to do this by my make three main points, which are one, um, less water is being wasted, two, um, less meat, meat eaten increases the biodiversity of the planet, um, and three, that less harmful is that it has less harmful effects on the ozone layer. Um, so going back to my first point, um, water is less water is wasted. So as we all know, all the resources on the planet is finite. Um, everything is limited. So essentially, we are watering animals. So like, what does this mean? How do we do this? So in a 2000, so in 2006, the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition stated that the water consumed by agriculture, um, that's towards irrigating things such as like cereals, soy, sunflower, um, these are all used towards cattle feed, um, and also quenching um, cattle's thirst and for cleaning their stables and slaughterhouses, etc. So we are essentially um, not, essentially we are wasting water that doesn't need to be wasted by eating all of these animals. Um, so how much water is actually being used? So in 2014, Betty Hollick, um, a deputy food editor, um, stated that one slice of bread is equivalent to 11 gallons of water, whereas an apple is 18 gallons, and an orange is 13 gallons. So comparing those like two-digit um, gallons of water, um, when we're comparing that to like one pound of chicken, it's 468 gallons of water, and one pound of pork is 576 gallons of water, and one pound of beef comes to 1,799 gallons of water. So by eliminating this meat and going more towards um, organic um, food sources, um, less water would be wasted. Um, so to my second point, which is that less meat consumed increases the biodiversity of the planet. Well, bio means life and diversity, this is a varying species on, on the planet. So in 2015, uh, Virginia Morrill from the American Association for the Advancement of Science, um, she interviewed uh, Brian M Mokovina, um, and he is an ecologist at the Florida International University. Uh, and he stated that by 2050, Given the current trends, the 15 countries who harbor the largest number, largest number of species will likely increase um, use, sorry, the, the 15 countries who harbor the largest number of species will likely increase land used for livestock by uh, livestock production by 30 to 50 percent, and which this equates to about three million square kilometers. Um, and the, he estimates that this will cause more extinctions than any other factor there is. So by creating all this land to put all these animals on, to, it just, we're going to wipe out all the other creatures that are out there because we're taking away their homes. Um, so my third point is that there are less harmful effects on the ozone layer. Um, so let's talk about what is the ozone layer and why is it so important. So in 2017, the European Environment Agency, um, they stated that the ozone layer sits in the stratosphere between 15 and 30 kilometers above Earth, and it absorbs most of the sun's ultraviolet radiations, um, limiting the amount that reaches the surface. Um, radiation causes can skin cancer and cataracts, 
So it's important for protecting um, human health and it prevents radiation damage to plants, animals, and materials. Um, so obviously this ozone layer is like pretty important to our health. Um, so how does meat um, hurt this ozone layer? Um, well, first let's look at the digestive system of cattle. So in 2014, um, Tamar Haspel, um, he's a food and science journalist, um, he stated that um, ruminants, which are um, animals such as cows, sheep, um, and goats, um, they have four chambered stomachs. Um, a four chambered stomach uh, that digests by fermentation um, and a byproduct of fermentation is methane, um, which is a greenhouse gas um, that has 20 times the heat trapping ability of carbon. Um, and one cow's annual input output of methane is 100 kilograms, and that's the same um, emissions generated by a car burning 235 gallons of gasoline. Um, and methane is known to destroy the ozone layer. Um, so, in conclusion, um, because less water is wasted and there will be an increase in biodiversity, and there's less harmful effects on the ozone layer, um, this is why a vegetarian lifestyle demonstrates more beneficial effects to the environment. All right, the wording of the proposition is a little convoluted, but it is uh, clear what direction you're headed here. There's a solid preview of what the supporting points are going to be. Um, I think the uh, signposts on the individual points are relatively clear in the body of the speech. Uh, the issue, I think, on the first point that is missing is some context on the amount of water that is available versus the amount that's being used. Uh, you, you've got a lot of detail about how much water is being used by individual um, types of meat, for instance, uh, but we don't have a context about what the limits are or whether or not that water is, you know, there's, there's some substantial consequence to the use of that water. If, if there's a hell of a lot more available and we're barely tapping into it and it's a drop in the bucket, so to speak, then I'm not sure why we're worried about this. If it is a half a bucket, then I could see why we should be worried about this, but we don't have any context for it, and so it's just a comparison between, you know, well, that uses this amount of water and this uses a lot more water without telling me how much water we have available. So I think that that's the thing that's missing on that particular argument. On the biodiversity argument, uh, it's uh, a, a reasonable argument to be making. It is dependent on entirely on this one uh, estimate that is provided by this Moroccan, uh, by this ecologist, I'm not a Moroccan ecologist, I think his name was, uh, started with an M. Um, and uh, the estimate about how there's gonna be a 30, 50% increase in the amount of land that's taken up for the purpose of raising animals, I think, is, is a good one. Uh, Again, I think some context would be helpful here. Uh, you mentioned three million square kilometers being uh, wiped out. Again, let's get some context about how many kilometers are available. Uh, maybe compare that to those that have disappeared already. I, I suspect that it'll be comparable and that'll make your argument a lot stronger there. And on the third point, um, the you, same sort of thing, it's very dependent on a, a singular piece of evidence that has a lot of information in it, including a presupposition at the end that the methane is going to destroy the ozone. And I, there's not really an explanation about how that works and why that works. It's just taken as a given, and I think that that's 
I think you've got a good argument here if you can get to that point, but either because of time constraints or because uh, you're relying on just the one quote, we don't really get that as convincingly as it might be presented. That being said, uh, you did a good job citing the evidence that you did have. It's re relatively well organized, and I thought that uh, it was clear what your argument was. You were making the explanations as we went along pretty effectively.